I emerge from the marine abyss, pulled by an upward current that takes me to the surface together with many others like me. We are held together by strong bonds that in your banal way you would describe as electrostatic. Excuse me, but you have a way all your own of undervaluing anything that is not made like you. My favorite companion is at my side and will stay there until fate pulls us apart. It is not easy for me to adapt to your system of days, months and years because, for us, the passing of time does not have the same meaning. Your geography is much more easily understood. I am west of the coastline of the American continent, in the northern Pacific Ocean, not far from the equator. The passage of a ship sends me into a spin. Before me there are islands, like oases in this blue vastness. Animal species cluster around that are in some way like those of the Caribbean. Two million years ago, before the Panama Isthmus was formed, the Atlantic and Pacific were joined together. It is time to set off again. At the equator, the trade winds blow continuously, sending a current around the planet from east to west. On my journey across the open sea, great ocean migrators keep me company. The water moving along the equator warms up and carries nutrients and the larvae of marine animals. This current, among other things, regulates the entire global climate and, if it is delayed, phenomenon like El Nino can be triggered. End of the journey. The current tosses me against a barrier of little islands of coral reef. A labyrinth of waters dividing into rivers, streams and brooks that, on contact with the reef and with the equatorial forest, are enriched with organic material. Sometimes they die at the bottom of isolated bays where strange animal species stand as evidence of evolution that is out of this world. On other occasions, they gain force by joining other brooks and bring the organic material back to the reef, which then becomes food. Corals, sea fans and sponges thrive in a three-dimensional world, the home and refuge of very tiny creatures. Specialization is mandatory here. The diversity of the environment encourages evolution and the result is great biodiversity on a global scale. We are in the Coral Triangle. I am heading south, along the Philippines and through the Banda Sea. 
After a wild ride between the islands of Komodo and Renka, I burst into the Indian Ocean. The trade winds continue to propel me forward, still accompanied by the ocean's vagabonds. A new barrier looms up before us, the coast of the African continent. My favourite companion disappears from view here. I have the impression she is heading north, while the great mass of water that dictates my course slips south into the Mozambique Channel. These are the reefs of South Africa, where waters rich in plankton support an enormous explosion of life. The great adventure of rounding the Cape of Good Hope awaits. Too many currents are fighting to get through the passage and they hold me back until... Here I am, in the Atlantic Ocean. Now the journey takes me towards the northeast. I cross the equator again and arrive in an area of calm waters, the Caribbean. This is the only area of coral reef in the Atlantic Ocean. Evolution with a troubled history marked by many extinctions explains the scarcity of biodiversity. I set off again on a route towards the northeast. The Gulf Stream, another major regulator of the global climate, takes me back across the Atlantic towards the European coast. I am losing the heat that I absorbed during my voyage. At the latitude of volcanic Iceland, the polar winds rapidly cool the water which increases its density. It begins to sink, moving southward. Suddenly, at depth, I run into a patch of much warmer water flowing at my level because it is much more salty. I hear calling. It is my companion in a body of water that left the Mediterranean via Gibraltar. At Africa, she had been diverted to the north and had reached the Red Sea. A long, narrow basin between Africa and Asia where the water is made extremely salty due to evaporation and the lack of rain. Once again, the diversity is great here, with reefs teeming with life. At the edges of the Indo-Pacific, in a closed environment, evolution once again followed its own path, as demonstrated by the high number of endemic species. Thank you. 
At the far north of the Red Sea, my companion said she felt an unexpected current. A new passage, opened by mankind, diverted her to the Mediterranean. A unique basin, the cradle of many human civilizations. Its salty waters, without reefs due to the climate, play host to a biological community that displays elements of tropical origin that increased in number following the opening of the Suez Canal. Finally, the return to the Atlantic. At a depth of 300 meters, the Mediterranean waters pass the threshold of Gibraltar and sink into the ocean, retaining their identity and remaining in warm, salty enclosed pools with high density. Reunited, we sink into the abyss. Silly me, I completely forgot to introduce myself. My companion and I are two water molecules. You should call us H2O, but then I did say how good you are at ruining the poetic. In 500 of your years, we have traveled the three oceans on the surface. Now we are going back, traveling on the bottom of those same oceans and, in at least another 500 years, we will be ready to start our trip all over again. 500 years, more than five human generations, during which many things have changed. At first, you traveled little on sailing ships in harmony with the environment. Then you discovered engine power, making vehicles of every type, creating noise and pollution. Some lie at the bottom of the sea, silent witnesses to your handiwork. You have changed the circulation, opening new waterways, and you have changed the Earth's climate. I am aware of this because certain currents that ran like clockwork are slowing down. The warm water accumulates and does not flow. We do not get cold enough to reach the bottom. And all this influences the climate of your habitat. I am heading into the abyss. If all goes well, we'll chat again in 500 years or so. I know I'll be somewhere. What about you?